Good evening and welcome to another session of the Ephesians Bible Study in our home prayer meeting. For our study of the Word of God this evening, please turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 4 and tonight we will be studying verses 26 up to verse 27 of this passage. But for us to see the force and the logical flow of this passage, let's read starting from verse number 21. And the Word of God says this, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And here's our passage. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Before we expound on a neither, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Before we expound on the word of God this evening, let us first come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father, Today we come before you, knowing that you are God and that you have given us set of instructions as how to walk in true holiness and righteousness, being made new by your Son. Tonight, Father, I pray that as we look into your word, may you guide us into all the truth. Help us to see the things you want us to see and may the truths, Father, that we receive from your word this evening simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. For the past weeks, we have learned that we, as we have heard Christ and have been taught by Him, we are to put off the old man and put on the new man. This new man is created, as we have read, is created after God's righteousness and true holiness. This true holiness and righteousness is actually expressed not simply as an ideal, but an actuality in verses 25 to verse 31. Last week, we saw that the way of the new man is marked by speaking truth. Tonight, we will see in our passage, the way of the new man is marked by anger without sin. Now, this passage that we're going to study tonight is one of the verses that has been misused, misinterpreted, and misapplied. The reason for this is due to the following factors. Number one, a misunderstanding of what anger truly is outside cultural and religious norms. We have falsely assumed that anger is sinful in and of itself. It's common human understanding. But if that is the case, then God and the Lord Jesus Christ himself who has expressed anger had sinned. And we know that cannot be. The root cause of this mindset is the failure to actually read the biblical texts as well as being unaware or in denial of the scriptures that show the anger of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the many passages that show the anger of God would be Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. If you would turn your Bibles to that, we would read these very words. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now hold the thought. God was angry at the children of disobedience. 
that is one of the many examples of the anger of God. Think about Noah's flood or Sodom and Gomorrah. We also see the anger of the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 3, verse 5. If you look at that, this is what the Word of God says. And when he looked, he had looked round about on them with anger. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hands, his hand was restored whole as the other. What do you see is common between those two? Now let us look another at another verse in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, which is actually very important to understand. Matthew chapter 5 verse 22 says this very words it says but i say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause okay shall be in danger of the judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother raka shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, you would see that that is the common ground in the anger of God and the anger of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is that it has a just cause. Now, if there is an anger that is without cause, which is sin, then therefore there is also a righteous cause for anger which makes it not sin. Hence, our passage tonight says, Be angry and sin not. Now, that is the main clause of our passage tonight, and we'll look, about, look at that more later. Now, another factor for misunderstanding, misusing, and misapplying this passage is, number two, a misinterpretation of the passage based on ignoring the rhetorical idiomatic expressions. Now, what does it mean in our passage when it says, Let not the sun go down on your wrath? Now, does it mean to resolve your issues before the sun sets, as said by many marriage seminars? This interpretation actually had put more strain on couples than actually helping them work through their issues. The boast of many, many marriage experts actually doesn't help. And I think many of them are lying or downplaying something. Now, we will be looking more on that, past, that part of that passage later on. Also, what does it mean to neither give place to the devil? Does it mean opportunity as the modern versions say it? While the real, the Greek word is actually topos, or where we get the word topography, okay, and literally means place. What does it mean to neither give place to the devil? Now we'll look at more of that later on. But what is failed to be seen is the idiomatic expressions that these two lines in verse 26c and verse 27 are actually conveying. Another factor, number three, is that the application has been popularized as to be for marriage and relationships. Now, the limited ap application faultily narrows the general applications intended by the author and seen in the context. It is not meant for marriage only. That's a very important to remember. But it applies to a whole plethora of the human experience as a mark of the new man's way of life. Now, with this in mind, let us expound our passage. Our prayer for you tonight is simply this. The way of the new man is marked by anger without sin. The way of the new man is marked by anger without sin. Now let's look at our passage and see the following things one by one. 
The first one is the command regarding anger. Now, we would see the prohibition is not to be angry, okay? But the command is be angry. But we have to ask, what is anger? Now, here's the definition. Anger is an excitement or agitation of the mind produced by the reception of real or supposed injury. That's a basic definition of what anger is. Now, in the scriptures, the word anger and angry is used 282 times in total. These two terms occur 270 times in the Old Testament and 12 times in the New Testament. Five times in the Gospel, six times in the Pauline Epistles, and one time in Revelation. In those instances, we see the following truths about anger. Number one, there is the anger of God and the anger of man. In Luke 14, 21, we would see the anger of God depicted in a parable wherein he was angry at the unresponsiveness of the people Israel. And because of that anger, he opened the invitation to of the kingdom to those who are undeserving and judgment upon those who incited his anger. The anger of God. On the other hand, in Luke 15, 28, we would see also the anger of man. This is the elder son who got angry with his father for his treatment of the prodigal son who wasted his life in righteous living and now is accepted by the father. He was angry because he perceives that what the father had done is unfair. The anger of God and the anger of man. Also, we see that anger as a work of the old man in the flesh. We see that in Colossians 3, 6-9 and Galatians 5, 19-21. We also see in those verses that anger is a time used as a synonym for wrath. A basic example is in our passage in verse 20, uh, 26a, it reads, Be angry or angry, okay? And in verse 26c, it reads, Let not the sun go down on your wrath. So anger and wrath are used sometimes for synonyms. Also, if you would read Ephesians 6, 4, if you have your Bibles with you, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. There's the word. Provoke not your children to wrath. But in Colossians 3.21, the word is this. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. So, wrath, anger are sometimes synonyms. Also, we see that there is anger with sin and anger without sin. Anger with sin is Ephesians 4.31, where anger is accompanied by wrath, by malice, by bitterness, and the sort. That's anger with sin. And anger without sin is in our passage in for, uh, for, uh, Ephesians 4.26, Be angry and sin not. Okay. Our lives must be free from anger that is with sin, as this is what a pastor should be, if you would turn to Titus chapter 1, verse 17, a pastor is supposed to be not soon angry. So the key word is soon. Diba? Soon. Hindi pag, yung pastor dapat din nagagalit, hindi, mali ang basa mo. Not soon angry. Diba? You see? Also, this is how we should pray. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, it says, we are to lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So, we have to be free from anger with sin. Next, we read, we say the command, Be ye angry. And it's important to follow it up with the second line. And sin not. Baka mamaya, ma, 
Patayin nyo na tong video at sabihin nyo, Oh, sabi ni Pastor, be ye angry. May kasunod pang line, mga kapatid. And sin not. Now, here's the interesting part. Okay, here's the interesting part. This part is what is normally missed when this passage is dealt with. So, I want you to keep your Bibles open and I want you to really pay attention. Okay, kasi napakaliit nitong bagay na to para makita natin yung kung anong sinasabi ng passage. Now, Notice that our main clause has two independent clauses. Okay, an independent clause means it can stand alone. So, be ye angry is an independent clause. You have a subject, ye. You have a verb, angry. So, subject, verb. It stands alone. Independent clause number one. Independent clause number two is, and sin not. So, you have a subject, ye, that is implied in the imperative, and sin, not. You have a subject and you have a verb. So, you have two independent clauses on the main clause. Now, this is a parallelism, okay? It's not antithetic because it's con uh, combined by the word end, okay? It's synthetic because the first line is added to by the second line. Be angry and sin not. Okay. So after that line, if you're using a King James Bible, very good. You will notice a colon. Okay. Hindi yan body part. Okay. Hindi yan colon body part. Huh? But a punctuation mark. The King James retained the colon that is in the Greek text of Stephanos, the Byzantine, Scrivener, and even the Nestle Allen in the BGT. So it's in the Greek text. The King James kept the colon, but the New American Standard, the ESV and the CSV, did not. Now, here is what a colon is for. Number one, it is to indicate a list. Okay, number two, it is to make an expla explanation where the clause after the colon explains the clause before the colon. And number three, it is for emphasis. Looking at our text, we would now understand why the colon is there and why it is important. Because the clause, be angry and sin not, is now explained by the clause after the colon. You see? So, you see, that be angry and sinning not happens when, we'll read verse 26c and verse 27. So we go on to the next truth, the considerations in being angry. So be angry and sin not, and we see the first slide. If we read, it says, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Now, it is important to see that this statement is an idiomatic expression a figure of speech. Hindi siya literal. If we take this literally, we will utterly miss the point and we'll be caught by foolish what-ifs. Narinig niyo na ba mga what-if na to? Number one, what if I get angry after the sun has set? So, lumubog na yung araw. Pwede pa pala akong magalit hanggang bukas? What if number two, what if I got angry moments before the sun sets? Bakit ganun na lang kakonti ang aking time to settle my anger? But that is not the point of the expression. We get the meaning of the idiom from the Bible itself. Now, if you would turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 14 to 15, this is the only time the phrase, sun, go down. Okay? We would understand what this idiomatic expression actually means. Verse 14 to 15 says this, Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, where he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Verse 15, At his day thou shalt give him his hire. Now, in that part of the passage, you have to understand that what is being talked about here is a day laborer or arawan ang kanyang trabaho 
araw-arawan din ang kanyang sweldo. Okay, we continue reading. Neither, sabi dyan, shall the sun go down upon it. Uh, and at his day, thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it. There's your phrase. For he is poor and set it his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. So, in that passage, it talks about giving the day laborer his day's wage before the setting of the sun. Why? Because that's the end of the day for a Hebrew, in the Hebrew, reckoning. The essence is not literally the end of the day, but it is the appropriate time to give the day laborer his day's wage. So, wag mo papalampasin, or else, it is sin. Hence, the concept of before the sun goes down is the appropriate and appointed time. So, here's the catch. We settle our anger in its appropriate time. We have to bear in mind that for whatever reason or cause that you may need to settle your anger, I want you to know today that the reason and cause has already been settled 2,000 years ago when the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose again. Friends, we have to know that we are sinners separated from God and we are totally antagonistic to God. We are His enemies. If there is a just reason for God to be angry at us, our sins are sufficient. But instead, instead, God sent His Son, the Lord Jesus, who is God manifest in the flesh, who died for our sins, being delivered for our offenses, and raised again for our justification. There at the cross, every sin imaginable, past, present, and future, has been settled once and for all by the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was buried in the third day, rise again. All of this has been settled. We are called to believe in who Jesus is as God manifests in the flesh and what He has done, His finished work on the cross that is sufficient for eternal salvation. On the basis of the truth, the cause or reason that we have to settle our anger against anyone at any time has been settled. So we have to resolve our anger by the grace of God in its appropriate time. This phrase goes hand in hand with the next phrase. You see the line, neither give place to the devil. Now the concept behind this expression is not to give the devil a foothold during our time of anger. This happens when anger is prolonged beyond its appropriate time. So it works hand in hand. Be angry and sin not. Deal with your anger in the appropriate time. Do not give the devil a foothold. Give not the devil a place. Consider these circumstances that give the devil a place. Okay, Number one, when there is no sufficient cause, like when receiving gossip. Okay? Here, the devil takes a foothold, causing us to get angry at someone without sufficient cause. If the gossip is about someone else, is there sufficient cause for us to be angry and take the side of the gossiper or be influenced by him? Now, many Filipinos now are very angry, but we have to be careful especially if you're a Christian and you're listening to this broadcast right now, we have to be very careful that the anger that we have 
is not provoked by someone else and it has no sufficient cause. One of the place of the media today is to anger us without sufficient cause. Hindi ba? Many of us don't like the barrier or the face shield. But is our anger rational and logical? Is it sufficient cause? Kasi if you don't like the barrier, test it. And if you say magastos or you believe the reason so on and so forth, think of it. What will be done if you get angry? Hindi ba wala lang? So that's a problem. That's a problem. You're being incited by the media. You're in being incited by others to be angry without sufficient cause. Beware. If the gossip is about you, on the other hand, what sufficient cause do you have unless, unless you verify it with the one who allegedly did it? Hindi ba yan ang sabi ng Bible? Isn't that not what the scripture says? That if your brother has offended thee, you go to that brother. Eh kung chinismis lang, nagalit ka, dahil chinismis ka, ay, that's insufficient cause. You go to your brother, confirm it. Diba? We have to be careful that when we are angry without sufficient cause, that the devil is getting a foothold. Be careful. This is very tricky. Number two, another circumstance that anger is uh, the devil takes a place in our anger is number two, when the cause has already been transcended, like when we go overboard. For example, you stub your toe, naglalakad ka, la 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 la, and then you hit your toe. Somewhere, siguro sa silya, or sa mesa, or sa kama, I don't know. But you stub your toe. Now, it's normal to be angry. Diba? Talagang galit. But, if you curse, nagmura ka na, then you have given place to the devil. When you curse, what stub your toe, or hit it, or throw it, tinapo mo yung kama, o tinapo mo yung, yung, yung silya, o yung mesa, nagwala ka na, you have given the, a place to the devil. If you have a bad day before of it, you give place to the devil, and if you scold everyone who may or may not have caused it, you have gone overboard. Those are the times when the devil takes a place during our anger. Number three, when it begins... To brew bitterness and animosity. Now, Filipinos love to keep to ourselves. Not only that, not only that is falsity, but that is utterly unspiritual. That is not dealing with your anger in the right way or in the appropriate time. As a matter of fact, hiding your anger is like ignoring or covering up a deep wound until it gets infected. For this reason, many in their anger become historians and anthropologists. Bakit historians? Because they dig up all the past issues. Okay? Bakit anthropologists? Because they interpret all actions in the present and future according to the hurt that has been dealt with them a long time ago. See? That is the kind of anger that gives the devil a foothold. Bitterness and animosity. Also, when we become vengeful and seek revenge. Now, here's a thought. Sometimes, many times, it is normal to react angrily against injustice in this world. It's really. Because hindi ka naman pwede na makarinig ka ng injustice in this world and you say, okay lang yan, normal. No. As believers, when we hear an injustice is done, our heart breaks, we are angry with a just cause, 
but that's it. We don't find the person who did that injustice and take revenge. We don't do vigilantism. Hindi tayo mag Batman. No. But we cry out to God. We cry out to God for the injustice that is done and there are so many injustice in this world. But we cry out to God because it is written, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Don't read it like this. Vengeance is mine thou, sabi ni Lord. No, 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 no. God is saying, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Do not let the devil have a foothold because we are beginning to become vengeful and we are seeking revenge. Number five, when that anger is accompanied by an unforgiving spirit, it is unchristian and unchristlike to ever say, I will never forgive someone. It's unforgivable. No. No. Whatever a person has done, as we have said before, it has been settled 2,000 years ago when Jesus died for our sins. When anger is accompanied by an unforgiving spirit, it gives the devil a foothold. There's more, I'm sure, and I know you know more. But these are some of the ways that the devil gives and gets a place when we don't deal with anger in its appropriate time. Friends, let it not be. Let us be angry and sin up dealing with our anger in its appropriate time and giving no place for the devil. The way of the new man is marked by anger without sin. Thank you very much for listening and we hope to see you again in our future broadcast. We hope to see you also on Friday for our Comfort Verses in Context. On Saturday for our Comfort Verses in Context. And also every Monday, we are bringing up a video for the Family Equipping Ministry that you and your family can use in your family worship and it could equip you to lead your families in worship and the Word. If you have questions or prayer requests, since this is also our home prayer meeting, you may write it in the comment section below. So thank you very much for listening. Do have a nice day. The Lord bless you.